and welcome back to Chat the Brain with Dr. Delane. I'm Dr. Christine Delane, board certified clinical neuropsychologist. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing dementia and more specifically Alzheimer's disease, as November is Alzheimer's Awareness Month. So, without further ado, let's get started. So, first and foremost, I do want to say thank you to all of you who have provided me with feedback and thoughts about. Um, these videos. It's been a lot of fun to put them together, but I think based on the feedback, my goal is going to be to keep them as short and information packed as possible. So we're going to try with this dementia video to keep things um, short, but give you a lot of the information that you're looking for. So as I mentioned in the little introduction, you know, we're going to talk about Alzheimer's disease today, but let's start by talking about dementia a little bit more broadly. Dementia is an umbrella term. It is a term that is used to describe a general decline in your cognitive abilities or general decline in your thinking skills. Um, this decline is enough to interfere with day-to-day -day life or day-to-day -day activities. Dementia does not indicate a disease. It is not the disease. Dementia is caused by the disease. So it might be dementia due to um, cardiovascular disease or something like that. There are many types of dementia, which I will touch upon briefly in a couple of slides. And unfortunately, all dementias are progressive. And what that means is they, once they are diagnosed or once the disease process has started, the decline cannot be stopped. It is progressive. The other thing to keep in mind about dementias is they really can only be diagnosed post-mortem or after death. So what that means is in autopsy, when the um, neuropathologist is looking, at the brain under a microscope, that is when they are able to identify what type of dementia the individual might have. So as I mentioned earlier, there are many types of dementia. So what are those types? So there are five main types of dementia. There's vascular dementia, Parkinson's disease dementia, Alzheimer's disease, which is the one we're gonna focus on today, frontotemporal dementia, and dementia with Lewy bodies. So Alzheimer's disease is characterized as gradual progression of impairment in one or more cognitive domains, with memory being the early prominent domain that is impacted. Over time, that, that deficit or those difficulties might generalize and you might see difficulties in a variety of different cognitive domains. But for Alzheimer's disease, the prominent um, domain that is impacted early on is memory. However, it is important to also note that what makes diagnosis a little bit more challenging sometimes is that there's often something called a mixed pathology. What that means is an individual might be demonstrating symptoms consistent with an Alzheimer's disease diagnosis, but they also might carry vascular risk factors. And those vascular risk factors may be impacting their cognitive decline, or they might have a mix of both Alzheimer's disease as well as vascular dementia. So Alzheimer's disease, we know that it's synaptic and neuronal loss, and it's associated with ongoing depositions of um, plaques and tangles. So you've probably heard of plaques and tangles if you've followed any of the research, but there is this deposition of plaques and tangles within the brain, which slowly over time, these deposits um, cause neuronal shrinkage and loss um, and a general shrinking of the size of the brain itself. We also see in Alzheimer's a reduction in the amount of certain neurotransmitters that are produced. So most prominently, there's reductions in choline, acetyltransferase, serotonin, and norepinephrine. We also see that there's a pretty consistent pattern of deficits that we observe on neuropsychological testing from a neuroanatomical perspective. Those um, typically begin in hippocampi, which is where our, sort of our memory centers are in the brain, and they move progressing from the frontal lobes sort of through the temporal lobes and the um, parietal lobes sort of moving anterior to posterior in the brain. And again, there's sort of a generalization, so there might be prominent memory difficulties initially, but then the deficits and the difficulties that someone is experiencing can be seen across a variety of different domains. So the number one risk factor for Alzheimer's disease is age. Nothing we can do about it. All of us are aging every day, but that is the number one risk factor that puts individuals at increased risk for um, a diagnosis of AD. It is the fifth leading cause of death in individuals over 65 years of age, and about 10% of the population of individuals over 65 years of age meet diagnosis 
diagnostic criteria for an AD diagnosis. So there's current estimates of about 50 million individuals who are living with dementia worldwide, and we know that about 70% of those individuals meet diagnostic criteria for Alzheimer's disease. So how is Alzheimer's disease diagnosed? We see in a neuropsychological evaluation a pretty classic pattern of deficits. That is, the individual is given information to learn. They have a really difficult time learning that information and what does get into their brain is lost in the short term. They have a difficult time retaining that information. If we give them a hint or we try to give them a clue, something that we call um, cueing, this does not help the individual. If anything, it makes them more confused. We also see difficulties or deficits in language, particularly in retrieving information, so pulling words out. And we see this in executive functioning, so that planning, that organizing, but we really see it in sort of that flexibility, being able to shift from one strategy to another and to you know, be flexible in their approaches to different problems that they are facing and then their attention more broadly, especially on things like working memory tasks where they have to keep information in mind, perhaps they manipulate that information in some way, and then they have to produce a response. We talk about family involvement because Alzheimer's disease does not just impact the individual who has the diagnosis. So Alzheimer's is an insidious disease. That means it sort of slowly creeps up on folks, or it sort of slowly progresses. This is not something where you wake up one morning and all of a sudden you can't remember anything. Individuals who have Alzheimer's disease oftentimes do not really even realize that there has been a change in their cognitive functioning or that they're having difficulties in the first place. Um, families can get really frustrated by this because they think the person is just denying their weaknesses. Or in, in fact, this is a part of the diagnosis. They're just not aware of the changes that they're experiencing. Um, though this is distressing to family members, early evaluations are the best way to start you know, intervening. So we want to be able to intervene and provide compensatory strategies, um, alarms that can be set, reminders that can be set, organizing the family environment so that an individual who does have memory problems is more successful um, and can retain their independence for as long as possible. Over time, having multiple evaluations or serial monitoring, as we call it, allows us to understand where they are initially and maybe how quickly the disease is progressing over time um, to give families a better understanding of how best to prepare and what to expect. So we know that intervening now, or as quickly as possible, no matter what stage of life you're at, the, the outcomes are certainly better. So things like eating a healthy diet, this is something I probably will do an entire talk on at some point, but um, exercise daily, getting outside, getting active, adequate sleep and good sleep hygiene, engaging in cognitively stimulating activity. Social engagement is extremely important. And the last piece is stress reduction and mindfulness. And actually I'm realizing I forgot to also include um, smoking cessation or reductions in um, the use of substances like alcohol or otherwise. So I'm going to pop the references up here. I would encourage anyone who has questions, thoughts, comments, concerns um, to give me a shout out. And I look forward to doing more videos for you in the future.